Rasha, it's probably a very common problem. It's one of the most common reasons that somebody actually goes to an eye doctor to get an examination. Uh, the difficulty is it's not exactly a diagnostic test. It says you have dry eyes or don't have dry eyes. So it's often a combination of the patient's symptoms and the examination that leads to the correct diagnosis. You know, one of the challenges in dry eye disease is making that diagnosis. So because in the office, that patient may have 20-20, and when he's driving down the street, he may have 20-70. So that can be a big difference. And you may not be able to pick that up very easily in the office. So it's one of the things to ask patients about, their fluctuating vision, the changes depending on their activity. Activity. They stare at a computer, and many people do these days. Uh, they don't blink as often. You need to blink to wet the tear film, to wet the eye, and people blink less when they're using the computer. And that's often when they have the symptoms of dry eyes, of the pain, and fluctuating vision. So uh, a key in any good physician examination is history and finding out what the symptoms are from the patient. So one thing, it's the graying of the population. It's the baby boomer. As we get older, it's more commonly get dry eyes. Now, we normally talk about it as more common in women, and it definitely is in almost every epidemiological study that's been done, it is more common in women than men. However, it's important to remember men get it too, so that when we're seeing patients, we don't want to avoid thinking about it when a male shows up with those chronic symptoms that may be dry eye disease. You know, patients have to understand that they do have to relate their symptoms. It's not obvious. They can't assume that a physician or the nurse or technician understands what their problems are. So if they're having pain, eye pain, they need to talk about it. If they're having an irritation or foreign body sensation, they need to mention it. Chronic red eyes, fluctuating vision or poor vision when they're doing computer work or reading or driving, all of these things need to be mentioned. Well, you know, one of the issues with dry eye disease is that the ocular surface is no longer normal. And when the surface isn't normal, that's when you get the chronic pain and that fluctuating vision. One of the advantages and that we're starting to think about in artificial tears, including lacquer certs, is that we're not just lubricating the eye. It's not just a, a medication to decrease pain, but we might actually improve the surface with regular use. And that's one of the exciting areas of research these days, is looking at the role of artificial tears, not just replacing the tears, but actually healing the ocular surface. And that's where you're going to see some differences. Some artificial tears may be better at that than others, and that's one of the exciting areas to explore and be able to match the patient with the right artificial tear to give them the best results. One of the issues is the OTC, the products you can buy in the drugstore. Some of them come in a bottle that you keep using, and almost all of those have a preservative in them. Others are in little tiny packages that are unit dose, and they don't have a preservative. So there's this issue, preservative or no preservative. Uh, in general, the preservatives interfere with the ocular surface. So in fact, if you have significant dry eyes, they actually may make it worse. One of the problems from a patient's point of view is there's a big difference in cost. The preservative products are generally less expensive, they're multi-dose usage, where the self-preserved are tiny little containers, you use them just one or twice and throw it away, and they tend to be significantly more expensive. So if it's a very mild dry eye, perhaps a multi-dose bottle it will work very well for you. On the other hand, if you're having continued symptoms, your eyes are still irritated, they're still red, they're still feeling like there's something in the eye, that's the time to think of something that's unpreserved. And that's one of the advantages of Lacrosert. There's no preservative in it. So you're not adding that potentially toxic element which might make the ocular surface worse and lead to more pain, more changes in vision. Lacrosert is a small, preservative-free ophthalmic insert for administration into the inferior cul-de-sac of the eye, the lower eyelid pocket. One Lacrosert in each eye once daily is usually sufficient to relieve the symptoms associated with moderate to severe dry eye syndrome. Some patients may require the flexibility of twice-daily use for optimal results. Lacrosert is indicated in patients with moderate to severe dry eye syndromes, including keratoconjunctivitis sica. Lacrosert is indicated especially in patients who remain symptomatic after an adequate trial of therapy with artificial tear solutions. Lacrosert is also indicated for patients with exposure keratitis, decreased corneal sensitivity, and recurrent corneal erosions. Most adverse reactions were mild and transient. Those reactions include transient blurriness of vision, you shouldn't drive or operate heavy machinery until it goes away, ocular discomfort or irritation, matting or stickiness of the eyelashes, photophobia, hypersensitivity, edema of the eyelids, and hyperemia or bloodshot eyes. 
Laquasert should not be used by patients who are hypersensitive to hydroxypropyl cellulose. If improperly placed, Laquasert may result in corneal abrasion. Laquasert is available only by prescription. For more information, go to www.laquasert.com.